Welcome back, and this is now the last section of this task, so the last section of component one, uh, in essence, um, well, at least for the mock. So let's talk about this. It's very similar to the previous section, whereby you're looking at strengths and weaknesses again, but this time we're not looking or thinking about the UI. It's about the way you planned for it. So in essence, we're talking about task B, learning A and B, where we made the task list uh, task list, uh, when we made the mood board, we made the perch chart, the Gantt chart, the critical path analysis, it's all of those items that you made um, and how they helped. So before we go any further, I've got page 66 and 67 of the book to help you, so please have a look at that and make reference to those items there for the top marks. And the rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. You know, you're going to identify what and how you plan this project. So you said, you know, you had four weeks to do this whole thing. And in those four weeks, uh, you planned for it beforehand by using these items here. And you're going to say which were these were the most useful and why. What did you have to change? Did you did you stick to them or to that plan? Did you have to add to it? Did you change it? And why? So number three, how and why did you did you do these and how much did they help you? Now, if you just say, I made them once, I didn't look at them again, I never used them, then know that you're going to fail this section. You have to say you used them because you should have been using them. The whole point of that is to basically plan your workload so you know you have enough time to do everything. So you will have said, I need to do this for this many hours, that for this many hours. So you know beforehand that you, for your first draft of the UI, you had X amount of hours or days. And then you got feedback and then you have X amount of days for more. So you need to have those in your mind. And the only way you can do that is by looking back at those items. So you need to say, it helped you, and here's the reason why. Number four, were there any mistakes made by your part? So did you look at these often? Did you make changes to them as you progress through the project? Explain. So you will have, you, will, you should have said, okay, um, that actually some things took longer than they should have or uh, than originally planned, uh, or some things were actually quicker than you thought. So you're going to explain those items and say, you know, at the end of the day, you know, and, and boys and girls, there's nothing wrong with saying that you changed it or you moved away from the Gantt perch or the, you know, the critical path analysis charts because they are there for an idea. It's a starting point to give you uh, room to work. It's not something that you have to be, you know, uh, working to the letter. You know, it is something to give you a, a starting point and, and a scope for your actual product, project itself because if you didn't do that in the, in the first place, you wouldn't know whether you had enough time or not. Um, so it's completely natural, normal for you to spend more time on certain tasks, to overdo certain certain things, to overrun, sorry, uh, certain tasks, um, and and to finish certain tasks quicker than uh, normal, or than expected. But just have to, you just have to identify here and explain it. Now the top marks are going to come for the last three questions. Number five, what obstacles or constraints did you come across? So what did you find difficult? What came in the way? What made it more difficult for you to do? What made it certain things slower? I mean, the most obvious one to talk about here is obviously the feedback. You know, you send it out to some people and you will have you, you will be able to say that actually. You have to wait for some people to come back to you. That, you know, people are working. You had to... Um, find a way to go and get that user interface in front of these people so they can ha actually have a look at it before answering these questions, which meant you had to find a way of seeing these people, booking time for these people, putting it onto a USB stick, and seeing them, sitting down with them. So you can say these items, these tasks took a bit longer because you didn't see or didn't think about it beforehand. Um, or some people just had jobs or other things going on that made it harder. Or, you know, maybe you, you, you found one person who said they'll do it, but then they had to change their mind or just, you know, let, they let you down. So you had to find someone else. Talk about those problems because these are the things that actually happen in the real world. So you want to explain those things and say, okay, here are the problems that I found. This is what I did to overcome them, which leads to number six. How did you overcome those problems? So you're going to say, here's a problem found. This is what I did. Now, you don't actually have to have question five and six over and over. You could have one paragraph where you talk about questions five and six together. So here's a problem, here's how, how I overcome. Here's, a, here's another problem, this is what I did as a result. Here's another problem that I found, and here's what I did as a result. And the last question, what lesson did you learn? And I don't want to hear anyone say nothing. Yeah, because you have to say you learned something. You have to say, this taught me something about the way I plan. Uh, or I'm glad that I planned it beforehand because it gave me an idea and a, and a time schedule to work to. Or that you can say, you know, I, I learned that... Not, I, I planned three days for feedback, and in fact, actually, I needed two weeks because some people uh, are working and so on and so forth. So, you know, I learned that actually I, I'll need more time than I than I first originally planned than I expected because when it comes to relying on people, um, you 
you know, people can be busy. But when it comes to tasks where I do by myself, work by myself independently, I can actually sit down and get it done because that's me relying on myself. So it could be small things like that, human traits or um, constraints in technology. Some of you might come from schools where technology is an issue, um, where you know you couldn't do the uh, survey online, or you couldn't print things off, or you know you couldn't see certain things because the technology let you down in some other ways or form. Um, or you could say the technology let you down at home. You know, you couldn't send it out to people because some people don't have uh, internet or computers or laptops, uh, whatever it might be. But you need to explain what those problems are and then as a result what you learnt. And the last thing is, how did the iterative or the waterfall methods help you? So some of you will have done iterative, some of you waterfall. Now, the t between the two, I personally think the iterative one is better because it allows you to go back and get feedback and make changes and go round and round and round. But you have to... First of all, understand what they those methods were, because I, pr I guarantee you one thing right now, most of you will have done the iterative, if you follow my videos especially, um, the iterative method without even thinking about it. it the iterative method, method is where you go back on yourself to do something before you go on any further. So in this case, you made your first UI, you gave feedback, then you went back to fix the UI before going back to the client, which is trolls in medical practice to say, here's a final product. So that's the iterative. Waterfall is when you do one thing, then next thing, so step three, then step four, then step five, and so on and so forth. But there's no backwards because a waterfall goes down, doesn't it? Yeah, in real, in the real world, the real waterfall is water from the top going down to the bottom, um, which means there's no back steps. There's no steps where you go backwards to make some changes, whereas this iterative does. So between the two, I personally prefer iterative, and if you followed my videos, you will have done that anyway. And you need to explain how that helped. So you're gonna say simple things like, the iterative process allowed me to get feedback, it allowed me therefore to make changes, important changes, that I would have uh, I, you know, otherwise not been able to identify, let alone make you know fix, before going back to the client. Because if I hadn't made those changes, the client may have been unhappy with the final product, and therefore unhappy with the service that I provided. Yeah, so you're using a business mind here to talk about how you are trying to get the best product or made make the best product for the customer that you're working for okay hopefully that helps as i said this is going to be at least a couple maybe three paragraphs long if you can do more than that it's even better and i'd say at least two or three hours to do this properly okay um if you have any questions of course you can ask me or, or your own teachers and um, good luck